the king of that time had to kill Isaiah mercilessly because of this message. Can Manasseh, historians tell us that he cut Isaiah into two because he didn't understand the message. That king himself was a mistake on his own. He was produced out of lack of understanding. King Manasseh was the wicked, the Bible says it. He was the most wicked king that ever lived in the kingdom of Judah. He did more evil than the Gentiles nations to God. Why? Because he was born out of lack of understanding. Hezekiah, his father, is sick. And then Isaiah is sent to Hezekiah to tell Hezekiah that prepare your house. You are about to die. You won't come out from this death. God says, if your death is wrong, God will not send the whole prophet to come and tell you, prepare yourself. That means that this death is in my will. A death that is not in the will of God, he will not tell you, you just die and go. But this time he tells you, prepare your house. Your time is up. Then the moment the prophet told this man, Hezekiah, that your time is up, Hezekiah turned to the wall and started speaking things to God. Shall the dead praise you? And he even reminded God of what he has done for God. Then God told Isaiah, return and tell him that I give him 15 more years. And that is why most of us clap and pray with it and we are happy. 15 more years. But you see what? When you read the, the story of, um, of Manasseh in the book of Kings, the Bible says that and when King Hezekiah died, his son Manasseh took his place on the throne. And Manasseh was 12 years old. When the man was about to die, then the prophet came. God gave him 15 years to live. And now when the 15 years was exhausted, his son that took his place was 12 years. It means that he gave birth to this son three years after God changed his death time. That means this is the boy God wanted to prevent. So this boy in itself was produced out of lack of understanding. If the king has understood that this is the will of God. Let me, let me just put my house to water and go. This was the boy God was preventing. If you stay 15 more years, boy, you are going to produce a child that will grieve me to a point that I will sell the whole of Israel to Babylon. You are going to force me to do something that I don't want to do. My son Daniel is about to be born and he will be innocently sent to Babylon. They will be castrated. Things will happen for 70 years. Problems will fall on them. I want to prevent it, so allow me to kill you. Hezekiah said, no. I need more years. Then within that 15 years, the king of Babylon sent his son to visit, his son's princess to visit him. Hezekiah and Hezekiah opened up the house of treasures to them and they saw everything then God sent Isaiah to Hezekiah then Isaiah asked did the Babylonians come here he said yes they came and he said what did you do he said I showed them all the treasures of this land Hezekiah within 15 years what mistakes are you doing you have been perfect on this throne all your life. This 15 years addition is creating problems. Number one, three years into the 15 years, you have given birth to a son. He's about to cause damage. Now the treasures that uh, David preserved, the treasures Solomon preserved, the treasures of the temple, you have shown everything to Babylon. This is the word of God for you. After you pass away, every treasure you show them, God says he will give it to Babylon. For you will have no good and peace on this land after you have left. 
Hezekiah said, did you just tell me after I have died? Isaiah said, yes. He said that so long as good and truth will remain in my time, it's fine. <laughs> he said, so long, as, so long as good and truth will remain in my time, then whatever God has said is good. Lack of understanding. The man didn't even think about posterity. Then lo and behold, Babylon came, destroyed the temple, took away the treasures. And his son Manasseh became the most wicked man that ever lived on the king on the throne of Judah. I'm talking to you about understanding. And this was the same man that killed the, pro- the great prophet Isaiah. Why? Because somebody didn't understand. Somebody didn't understand. Jesus looked at Jerusalem and said, if you know what it will make for your peace, you wouldn't do what you're about to do. He says that for, for you have missed the time of your visitation, and because of that, your nation shall be put down and remain desolate, and your, and your mothers and children shall be held captives. Because they were about to crucify the Lord of hosts, betray him to the Romans, not that Jesus was wrong, but they didn't understand what they were doing. Isaiah prophesied everything about Jesus. And amazingly, in Isaiah chapter 4, verse number 18, Jesus appeared in the temple after his wilderness fasting. And the Bible said they delivered to him the book of Isaiah. That means that the man is a true prophet. They delivered to him the book of Isaiah. And Jesus opens Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To deliver the captive. To open the prison gates. He, to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus finished reading Isaiah. Then the Bible said he sat down. And you know the seat of Moses in the temple. He sat down on the seat of Moses. And if they knew that it is only the Messiah that will come and read the book of Isaiah and sit down on the seat of Moses. All this they didn't understand. That the moment Jesus read the book of Isaiah and sat down on the seat of Moses, that was declaring that I am the Messiah. Yet they didn't understand. And the Bible said the same chapter, chapter 4, they took him to a mountain wishing to throw him down and kill him that time. Lack of understanding. How many prophets have we not destroyed because we don't understand God? How many people have we not attacked because we didn't understand the move of God? How many churches have we not break down because we didn't understand the move of God? How many marriages have we not destroyed because we didn't understand the move of God? How many people have we not rejected other than received because we didn't understand the move of God? Lack of understanding have destroyed the church. Lack of understanding. How many prophets? He said that I sent prophets to you. But oh Jerusalem, daughters of Jerusalem, he that stones your prophets and kill your prophets. How many of us are we not happy when a prophet is in a trap? How many of us are we not happy when a pastor's case is on the media and we are dissecting it? How many of us are we not happy? We don't even understand the move of God. Do you understand why God gave you that husband? Do you understand why God gave you that child? Do you understand why God gave you that wife? Do you understand why God gave you that pastor? Do you understand why God gave you that church? And why God gave you that business? And why God gave you that property? Do you really understand? The problem of the world is lack of understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. In all that getting, get understanding. You might have wisdom, but without understanding you are doomed. What is understanding? Your ability to apply the knowledge you have. The fact that you quote scriptures doesn't mean you understand it. It is when you start applying it to your life. That is why we quote many scriptures, but nothing about our life shows that we really believe in the word we quoted. Lack of understanding. Lack of understanding. Isaiah, I send you to give them the depth of revelation, but they won't understand. The problem, listen, there is something that supersedes revelation, that's understanding. You are going to give them depth of revelation. But because they don't understand, they will perish. He said the land will be desolate. There shall be no man in the land. Because they don't understand. 
how many of us go back and sit down and say how do I apply this message that came to my life how do I apply lack of understanding we have been missing many things the Bible says that and the women rose up early in the morning and went to the sepulchre and saw an angel sitting on the stone and said that Jesus has, has resurrected and the women went to the disciples and went to tell them that Jesus has resurrected. And the Bible says that, and the disciples, the apostles told the women that these are fairy tales to us. They are just stories to us. And the Bible says two of the men that the women told were walking on the path of Emmaus. And on the road of Emmaus, the Bible said, and Jesus joined to them. And whilst they were walking, the Bible said that whilst they discussed the death and the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus started teaching them. He said that, why all fools and slow to heart? Have you not heard from the prophets? The Messiah must suffer and then after that be glorified. Then he said he started expounding things about himself from the prophet and the laws to them. Yet the people didn't know that this person talking to me is an unusual man. And they walked with him and he kept teaching, he kept teaching, he kept teaching until they got to the house of the two men. And the Bible said that they entreated him to stay for the night. And whilst he sat down with them, he broke bread and gave it to them. And the Bible said the moment they ate the bread, their eyes opened and they saw who he was. And the Bible says that the moment they saw him, he disappeared. But look at what they said. He said that, did our hearts not burn in us when he yet spoke to us? That means that something was happening to us, but we don't know him, so we can't receive it. Something burned in us, but we don't like him. Who are you to be teaching us, Jesus, from, Gen uh, from the prophets to the law? Who are you? And yet we carry the Bible, but we are repeating the same mistakes in the Bible. We must know your educational status. Know whether you are anointed, what is your background, who is your spiritual father, who is that. Before we accept the message, even if the message is like fire in our bones. How many people do you have in your church? Do they use lamb cruises? How many four by fours do you have? What is your average offerings in church? Before you, whatever, mess, whatever the message is doing in our heart, we won't accept until we see you. And the Bible said, the moment they saw who Jesus was, now they began to appreciate the message. Did the message not burn in our heart? Why didn't you tell him that when you were walking on the road? Why didn't you tell him that? Don't we see that? We value the shoes of bishops more than their message. If you don't please me with your appearance, I won't accept the message you have to give me. Lack of understanding. The moment they ate the bread, their understanding opened. They saw who he is. Kill a sucker. Anyone with a mission and assignment on earth, but you are being denied it because somebody cannot see you. May the eyes of the understanding of people be open that they may see who you are. If people don't see you, they won't accept the message. The moment they ate the bread, they started seeing Jesus. Suddenly, they began to appreciate the message. There are messages that could have changed the world, but we didn't know the name of the preacher. There are books that could have turned people's life around, but we don't know the name of that writer. No matter if we don't know you, then your message is nothing. Lack of understanding. Lack of understanding. I pray that men like the Enoch of Ethiopia will rise up. The Bible said he sat in his chariots. He has gone, he has traveled. Listen to me. It is like three, three hours flight journey from Ethiopia to Jerusalem. If you are taking a airplane, how much more a car? And how much more a chariot? The man has traveled from Ethiopia to Jerusalem to worship. And when he was coming back, he had the information. He had the book of Isaiah. And the man was reading the book of Isaiah. And specifically, he was reading Isaiah chapter 53. He was reading the book of Isaiah chapter 53. 
And then the spirit of the Lord took Philip to meet him on the road. This man has traveled too long. That he has been in the temple to worship, yet cannot understand the word. He's carrying Isaiah 53. This is the mystery of salvation. Yet the man was not saved. How could you have gone to church, traveled all this while to go to church, and yet you came back unsaved? They tell a masika, coming back unsaved. And the Bible said that when Philip met him, Philip said, what are you reading? He said, I've been reading the book of Isaiah. And he said, please teach me. Was the prophet talking of himself? Or he was talking of another person? And the Bible said, Philip began to explain Isaiah 53 to him. And suddenly, the, Philip told the man, if you believe, the man said, yes, I believe. Look at the man's words. Yes, I believe that Jesus is the son of God. He said, what stops me from being baptized? Now the man is asking Philip, what stops me from being baptized? But Philip even didn't teach him baptism. That means that he knows certain things, but he didn't understand. But the moment someone opened up the understanding to him, suddenly he knew the importance of baptism. He knew the importance of seeing Jesus as a son. Allah Kayadash. I pray for you. May the eyes of understanding be opened. In a time like this, men of understanding cannot be detected. We will not be tossed about by any wind of doctrine. They can't tell us what to do. We understand what we are involved in. We understand what we are into. I know who it is who will be a pastor. I know it. You cannot defeat me. Somebody must know what it means to be a Christian. What it means to be part of a church. What it means to be part of a commission. And nobody can deceive you. And nobody can tell you what to do. Because you already know it. The man, the moment he understood the book of Isaiah, he started requesting. He was baptized. And now, do you know it's possible to go into church and not meet your transformation there? It is somebody you don't know. What if the man didn't have understanding to know? It's not about the one on the street or the one on the pulpit. It's about the message. It's about the message. He has been with the high priest and been with the priest. He didn't get the understanding until he met a certain Philip on the road. I'm telling you about understanding. The time has come. The hour has come. You don't look at the fact that I'm not rich. Hear the word of God. Don't look at the fact that I don't have what other people have. Hear the word of God. When God wanted to announce Jesus, he didn't announce him that watch his personality. He didn't say watch his appearance. The Bible said the heavens opened and they heard the voice. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. What he has to say is more important than what he drives. What he has to say is more important than what he wears. Hear what he says. Let the sugar halasa. Lift up your voice. Pray God give me understanding. Lift up your hands. prophets, pastors, Christians the world, many people have gone to hell, many people have been destroyed because of lack of understanding, they just didn't understand what they were doing but today by reason of the word of God I pray that may our eyes be open Paul said that, that the eyes of our understanding may be open may the Lord open our eyes wherever we are going wrong May the Lord bring us back to his will. May the Lord bring us back to his will. May the Lord bring us back to his will. In Jesus' mighty name. Let the saints shout a big amen.